Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to all new section of building execute automation reporting system backend. And in this video, we'll be talking about understanding and creating database structure. And you can see that there are some of the logos like Visual Studio, PowerShell and Pickles icon are kind of grayed out. And the reason is because these technologies or tools will not be used in this complete section. We will be only using SQL Server. So let's get started. Are we going to create a complex database structure here? The reason is because we are going to understand and create a database structure. So do I need to be a hardcore in SQL Server so that I can understand what this section is going to be? Well, you don't have to be an expert in this in the SQL for this section though. Just basic knowledge is almost good enough. So before designing our database table, it's super important to consider the errors to be future proof. At the same time, it should have a complete historical tracking of our test report so that anyone in the team should see the report or execute the test at any given point of time. So we need to make sure that our execute automation reporting system should be future proof. That's very, very important. And it should have historical tracking as well. So our errors should have the following in the tables like who executed the test in the team to track the historical report and who request for the test run, which build of the application is being executed, at what time it's being executed, and what is the application name which is being executed and is inserted into our errors reporting system. And what is the test case name or step name and what is the exception being thrown in the application test and which is being captured in the uh, errors and what is the result of the test and is there any failure screenshot etc. So these are the kind of consideration which is required while you start designing your reporting system. Because your manager at the end of day is going to sh ask you can you show me a report which is going to have uh, uh, who executed the test and what is the application is being executed and what is the build being executed and what time it has been executed and the failure screenshots and exceptions etc right that's very very important and that's very important for not just manager but also for your team members and peers so these are the considerations that we need to take care before starting to design our execute automation reporting system hence our errors backend tables structure is going to look something like this in order to make all the before consideration that we saw in our previous slide. Like this. We are going to design only three tables, just merely three tables. One is TBL test cycle, another one is TBL detail report, and TBL failure report. And they have a foreign key, primary key constraint relationship, and the reason is because only then it will be integrated and it works fine without any isolation. So let's talk about these tables in detail. TBL test cycle. TBL test cycle table is going to hold the unique test execution cycle ID for each test we are going to execute. So it is very, very important. So this ID is going to be a unique ID for your whole test execution. And you will use this cycle ID for identifying what test is being executed at any given point of time. The test cycle ID column of the table is a primary key and it's an identity column as well, meaning it will be automatically generated. You don't really have to specify uh, which ID has to be explicitly. It will be automatically generated since it is an identity column. The test cycle ID is going to be a foreign key for TBL details report table. And you can see now there is a relationship between your TBL test cycle table as well as TBL detail reports table. This table stores all the information regarding current test execution, but not the test itself. It just stores the information regarding the current test execution, right? So where is my test results going to be saved? That's where TBL detail reports comes into picture. The parent cycle ID of the table holds the test cycle ID of our TBL test cycle table, as we saw in our previous slide. Test report ID column of the table is the primary key and it's an identity column. Again, you can see that the test report ID column is a primary key and it's an identity column, meaning this particular column is also automatically incrementing the value. You don't really have to specify that. And the reason is because, again, it has a relationship as a foreign key to TBL failure report table. This table is designed 
by keeping spec flow in mind hence you can see the table has uh, columns such as feature name scenario name and step name and you can also see there are some exceptions and results in the table column so that you can capture those details as well the final table is the dbl detail table so in this table the failure report id is going to hold our foreign key of dbl details report table and the screenshot column is a binary column and it is going to hold the failure screenshot of the table result so these are the three tables which are going to make our exit automation reporting systems function like a charm so we are going to use and create these tables in next video